Hi, I'm Umbreon Libris, and this is my Pokemon Violet Adventure Journal. Before I tell you what I did today, last night, after I'd already recorded the video that you saw, Indigo and I joined a friend on a Flittle outbreak. Indigo's been trying to get a shiny Flittle, and our friend Flora has the shiny charm. So they hosted this outbreak for us, and we didn't get lucky, we didn't find the shiny Flittle, but we had this really funny moment where, on my game, Indigo's character's arm was broken, or rather, it was stuck in place. It was really funny watching Indigo do the various poses and emotions and actions that you can do, but with the arm completely out of place. So we had some fun with that, and I thought you'd enjoy seeing it too. We started the day also doing some co-op stuff. We did our first four-star raids, or at least my first four-star raids. It was a fighting-type Salamence from this weekend's event. We lost the first time because it turned out the Salamence had a crunch, and so bringing Psychic-type Pokémon wasn't a good idea, but we tried again, and we won. I spent most of the rest of the day doing two things. The first was just exploring this area, just looking for items and Pokémon that I haven't seen and things like that. And because this area is so mountainous, it took me a really long time, but it ended up being pretty uneventful. The one thing to highlight is that I found the blue shrine, the one for the ruinous beads. Throughout the rest of my exploration, I also found two more blue stakes, including one that's directly above the shrine. And considering there was also a purple stake directly above the purple shrine, maybe that's a trend? Maybe that's a consistent thing for all of them? but I haven't yet found enough of the blue sticks to completely unlock the shrine. The second thing I spent a lot of time on was Team Star's fighting base. The way that I tend to operate when I have more than one complete team that I'm working with is that I'll keep one team on me until they've all reached a multiple of five level, and then I switch the entire team for the weaker one. So when the team that I had on me, which was, I would say, my primary team, reached all level 50, I swapped them out for the set that was still around level 45. And when I took this team to fight the guard at the gate of the Team Star base, it became clear that I had a very significant disadvantage. There was almost a 10 level difference, and the only reason I was able to get through that battle is that I had Riri with a powerful psychic type attack. So I knew that things were not going to be easy. The Star Barrage was not as tough as I was expecting, made it through healing just once, but when Eri showed up, so did the challenge. That first battle with her was a doozy. Especially her Annihilate, which, well, annihilated good chunks of my team. I didn't even make it all the way to the Starmobile on the first try. So instead of going right back to it, I actually spent a little bit of time doing some grinding with this team and got everyone to level 49. I also adjusted some of their movesets using TMs, and I changed tactics a little. I put Hallie up first, planning to have her set up both Toxic Spikes and Stealth Rocks to get as much damage onto Ares' Pokémon as quickly as possible. The strategy worked pretty well. I had poor me using Dig to build up the poison damage, but Lucario and the Starmobile were immune to the Toxic, and the Stealth Rock just weren't doing that much damage since it's not very effective. And ultimately, the Starmobile was able to KO my last Pokémon. But I had enough success that I decided to just try again right away and hope that just a few things would go my way. It was all the same strategy, except that I was able to preserve Bot until the end, so that it could use Screech to ensure that when Riri came out with the Psy Shock, she would for sure get the one-hit KO. But Riri just barely missed the KO. Feels like with just a slightly better attack roll, she could have done it. But the Starmobile retaliated with a high horsepower and took her out. I felt like we were really close though, so I just did a little bit more training just to get everyone to level 50, hoping that just that one extra level would push us over the edge. And my attempt number four went great. This time it was wild, my Annihilate wrecking her team. Wild even did some really big damage to the Starmobile, but when I sent out Riri to get the finishing blow, critical hit! High horsepower, and she's out again. So I regrouped, and I made another change to my moveset. This time I taught poor me Play Rough with a TM, and it turned out that was the right call. Play Rough was doing a lot more damage than what I could get from Dig and the accumulated poison damage. So after poor me and Wild put in most of the work, Riri was able to KO the Refafroom. This was an extremely difficult fight. 
It took me five tries, and for sure it could have been much easier if I had brought different Pokémon, but I had fun with the struggle. There haven't been a lot of parts of the game that actually stop me like that, so I really appreciate it when something does, even if it's largely my own doing just through the way that I naturally play. From the dialogue that we got after I defeated Eri, I feel like I'm starting to get a better idea of what happened. We still have one more base to go, so when I defeat that one, I'll probably have a more complete picture. But I feel like now I have a much better sense of what the motivation is for Penny slash Cassiopeia, whether or not they're the same person, to be trying to break down Team Star. I think she feels responsible for her friends being seen as bad guys, and she probably thinks that disbanding Team Star will solve that. I think that's probably misguided. Keeping the community together probably would have been better, but with the way that Clavel is putting in the work to really understand what's going on and what's in the minds of the people organizing Team Star and the people joining it, I think it might work out in the end. I'm really, really enjoying the story and I can't wait to see how it ends. There's still a lot left to explore in the North, plus the last Starbase, but I think that by this time next week, we might be watching the credits. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next chapter.